Kunrad, I'm so thrilled that we have an opportunity to chat today. And of course, you know, we're just so excited to see Leiden Labs become part of the GV life science portfolio. Um, as we get started, maybe it would be great for people who don't know who you are, if you could introduce yourself. Uh, you know, you're the new CEO of Leiden Labs, but introduce yourself and maybe for the people who don't know you, tell us a little bit about your background and how you came to Leiden Labs. No, thank you, David, and uh, great to speak. And like I said, I'm Conrad Wiethaup. I'm one of the founders and CEO of Lion Labs. Uh, a bit about my background, actually grown up with pharma biotech since my father was a scientist who led a major pharmaceutical companies, uh, a company and went into biotech afterwards. And of course, I claim to have made my independent choices, but somehow this must have had an influence on my career path. So I have a scientific background in life sciences from the universities of Leiden and Delft here in the Netherlands, and then started my professional career in business development. Uh, for a biotech company in the San Francisco Bay Area, where I realized that I really want to be on the intersection uh, between the science and the business in order to help to bring new medical interventions to people who need them. When we came together with the four founders during the first lockdown, you know, of the of this current pandemic in the garden, in the garden, of course, given the restrictions, and we thought about, you know, uh, how can we ensure that these pandemics will never happen again? I realized that this was the opportunity I have been uh, dreaming of. Let's follow up on that theme a little bit, because as you mentioned, you were in the middle of this pandemic. So viruses are on everybody's mind right now. And as we know, there are so many viruses out there, the ones we know, and there's so many that we don't know that may emerge one day. And so maybe tell us a little bit about what is Leiden Labs trying to solve and why did you decide to take the intranasal route uh, versus some of the other routes that are available for administration? First of all, you know, um, the problem, right? Um, we all try to live our life to the fullest. You know, we want to be able to hug our loved ones, go to concerts or just work, right? Uh, travel, do spontaneous things with other people. And we cannot do this now, right? The current COVID-19 pandemic has caught us off guard and showed we're not ready for what you're saying, the new or mutating uh, viruses. And the global health, economic and social burden is enormous. And everybody has been challenged by the crisis, right? People losing their loved ones to disease, becoming ill themselves, losing their jobs, uh, feeling mentally pressured, but also the smaller things, you know, like uh, my mother not being able to hug my daughters uh, or my wife who is actually from Istanbul, uh, who has not seen her family for a year. And the problem with, uh, is that the current approaches that we have to this pandemic, which are, by the way, very important, but they're all a reactive you know on the one hand we see you know very broad measures such as social distancing and the other hand very specific measures like vaccines protecting against one or very few virus strains um, we have developed these vi vaccines as unprecedented speed but still this takes time and you know and certainly remains about how well they protect against mutations uh, and new strains so this all has a huge burden on society and we need a proactive approach to better, be better prepared against future outbreaks, like you say, uh, to mutating viruses, but also the viruses that are still out there. There are 1.7 million viruses still out in, in nature, and it's unclear which virus or strain will hit us next, but we need to be ready for that and not have these constraints on our lives. So tell us a little bit, Kunrad, about how Leiden Lab is going to attack this problem. And again, uh, you know, one of the things that's so fascinating is the fact that many of the therapies now require us to go see a physician, but this could be something that people would be able to take at home since it's an intranasal approach. What what made yeah. you think about that? You know, with so many um, mutating viruses um, and new ones that could jump over to my, mankind, we need to develop an approach to be better prepared against all viruses, right? So, and therefore we want to go beyond what other people have thought of, unlocking we think is a new wave of medicine developing broad protection against the whole range of viruses. Um, and that includes the mutants of, of, that, that emerge after a virus has entered uh, mankind. So we are developing products that target the commonalities of viruses and virus families. Uh, the 1.7 million viruses uh, I mentioned before exist in virus families, such as the coronavirus family or influenza virus uh, family. And, but only a handful of these very these families have in the past produced 
the most dangerous, fast-spreading uh, viruses, which are all respiratory viruses that travel through the air and affect us in, in that way. By targeting what these families have in common, we can fight these full uh, virus families and protect against a broad range of viruses that are most likely to cause pandemics. And in that way, provide people with the means to protect themselves and live life to the fullest. Now, you asked me about the intranasal administration approach that enables people, uh, that enables us, sorry, to attack the virus where it attacks people. So respiratory viruses, of course, attack through uh, the nose, through the actually the nasopharyngeal area, the intranasal area, whether it's through the eyes, nose or mouth, that will all come back into uh, that area. And when we immediately stop the virus there, further infection to the rest of the body um, uh, can be uh, prevented and also transmission to others can be stopped. Um, and additionally, this intranasal route, as you, you rightly say, is um, also allows us to develop self-administrable products. That means that people can control themselves where and how and, uh, uh, and, and when they want to use it. They decide when they need uh, protection. Because of this route of administration and the molecules we're using, our product candidates will also uh, provide protection instantaneously, uh, so right from the moment, moment they are taken, um, because they not, do not require for the body to kick in the immune system, which uh, is how traditional vaccines protect against infections. So with this instant protection, people can actually quickly use the products you know, just before they leave for a dinner with friends, a ball game, or a crowded bus, uh, for that matter. That's great. You know, one of the things that was pretty striking when we were starting to talk uh, with you and your team was the team that's been assembled. You know, world-class virologists, incredible advisors. So tell us a little bit about who's on the team and how did you get them all together? <laughs> yes. No, I'm actually uh, extremely pleased to be working together with such a fantastic an experienced team. You know, this is also one of the reasons why I think we can succeed in achieving this uh, ambitious mission. So uh, I founded Leiden Labs together with Jaap Goudsmit, Dinko Valerio and Ronald Bruss. Uh, they have developed biotech success in the past, like the company Crucell, uh, where they developed the Percy 6 and AdVac platforms. Uh, Crucell uh, and the platforms were later acquired by Johnson & Johnson. Uh, which now form the basis for their vaccine lines, such as the Ebola vaccine, but also the current you know, single-shot COVID-19 uh, vaccine. Next to that, we have very engaged board members like John Martin, who is the former uh, CEO of Gilead, uh, Onno van der Stolpe, who is the CEO of Galapagos, um, James Shannon, former chief medical officer of GSK and head of pharma development of uh, Novartis in the past, and Richard Whitley, a world-renowned virology expert, also working closely on the U.S. COVID response. And of course, with the current round of funding, we can also build on your expertise, uh, David, uh, and the knowledge and experience of, uh, for example, Stephen Knight from F Prime, uh, but also Eli Kasdan uh, and Brooke Byers um, uh, there. So that's on one, one hand the team, but also we have a, a large group of ambassadors, which we call ambassadors, which were early investors uh, to the company. And, you know, are all um, biotech or business leaders that help us tremendously with pushing the science and development, building the company further, and also with their networks in pharma, academia, finance, uh, you know, and with, for example, governmental institutions. And then lastly, you know, we're building out a team with fresh, yeah. young and curious talent uh, to complement the experience that we already have um, uh, in the team. Let me come back for a minute to the intranasal approach, which is pretty unique. And how do you see that compared to the other approaches out there? And can you imagine that for some viruses, it'll actually complement, even if we have a vaccine, how would the intranasal administration complement in a situation where we may have a vaccine that's somewhat effective or maybe even very effective? I think it's important to realize, of course, product products in these, like a vaccine also work uh, preventatively, right, uh, to make sure that people do not catch disease. But we see that actually um, these products will add value in the different stages of a pandemic or of uh, a, a viral disease. So first of all, uh, at the start of a pandemic, people can protect themselves with the intranasal uh, products uh, from infection and prevent their also transmission from, from others. So 
they decide when to take this, which is different from the uh, traditional vaccine approach, which of course is also very important. Don't get me wrong uh, there. Um, uh, but then we can also, in that initial phase, you know, curb the spread of the the, the virus. Well, and people can still live their life freely. Um, secondly, you know, when the virus manifests as a seasonal or a, a endemic disease, and where there might be certain vaccines uh, for for these diseases, such as what we have now, of course, for influenza, we see that that. Um, these products could also be used on top of uh, vaccines, giving additional protection when and where people need them against all strains, not just a specific strain of a, a vaccine, but all strains. Um, uh, for example, people that are high risk, you know, of developing serious disease when they are getting the flu uh, could use these intranasal sprays when they go out to risky events. And therefore, it protects against, you know, last year's strain, this year's strain, but also the following year's strain of that, uh, that virus. Yeah, we haven't had, you know, most people are not thinking about the common influenza right now because we're in the middle of the pandemic and everyone's wearing a mask. So the number of typical influenza cases are down. But we know that hundreds of thousands of people around the world die every year of influenza and the vaccines are only marginally effective. And that's, I think, one of the things that's so exciting is Leiden Lab's ability to try and go after a pan-influenza approach, which has been lacking for, for so many, it doesn't exist right now. Yeah, that's, no, we find it also really important to focus uh, you know, on, uh, on influenza as well, uh, you know, and because of the seriousness of, of that disease as well. And, and the fact that, that with mutating uh, variants, but also new um, influenza virus jumping over from, from animals, it could also cause uh, additional pandemics in the future. And of course, like you say, um, uh, currently also hundreds of thousands of people are dying each year because of influenza. So obviously, you know, one of the focus points for Leiden Labs will be looking at future pandemics, protection, preparedness, uh, we're in the middle of our pandemic now. I mean, we're beginning to see some light now because the vaccines are beginning to roll out around the world. The numbers are starting to get a little bit better, but we still have a long way to go. And I'm just curious from your perch, uh, such a unique perspective you have, where do you think we are in the life cycle of this pandemic? And do you think this coronavirus could become endemic and we'll have to deal with this every year for a period of time? Yes, no, David, um, that's a very good question. You asked me to predict the future, uh, which I think is a quite, hard, uh, a quite hard to do, but it's exactly emphasizing the need for our products. So in the current pandemic, of course, we've seen a number of infections, hospitalized people uh, moving up and down. We've also seen new uh, mutations of the virus gaining ground in different regions of the world. And while all this is happening, you know, many people are struggling to cope uh, with all the constraints on their daily lives. So we don't know exactly how COVID-19, of course, will evolve or which strain will be the dominant ones in the months to come, but also in the years to come and if it becomes endemic. But we do not know that we need to protect against uh, uh, protect us, us against uh, that. And that's what we do with our platform, you know, developing products uh, that we can um, target the known variants, but also the new variants. So we don't know, need to know exactly the future but we can actually protect against its threats. Yeah, that's great. You know, the other thing that this pandemic has highlighted is the issue of access, mm -hmm. because we know that if we look just at not only vaccines, but access to therapeutics for COVID-19, they're very different in different parts of the world. And it really has highlighted the differential access that we see. One of the things that I find very exciting about Leiden Lab is that the product being intranasal and self-administered could really change the way we think about access uh, around the world. And, and I'm wondering how you factor that in as you think about building out the products at Leiden Labs. Yes, no, we think that's extremely important. Also, personally, I've worked uh, quite a bit on, you know, uh, looking for broad access to medicine across uh, the world, also in my, my previous role. So, and we also really think about these products being 
self-administrable, uh, like you say, that it's uh, easier to give a broad, um, broad access also to a, a broad, uh, uh, you know, group of people where where we think we can actually protect um, uh, people all across the world uh, from uh, from these uh, pandemics, but also just the viral diseases, respiratory viral diseases that are in, endemic in different parts of the world. Yeah, I do think that is going to be so critical uh, for the future. So very exciting today that uh, Leiden Labs announced uh, the $50 million A round funding. We're obviously thrilled to be part of that. And so with this new fresh infusion of capital, maybe talk a little bit about what the company's focus is going to be in the next few months and uh, the rest of this year and into next year. We'll use these proceeds you know, to further develop our platform and then the product uh, candidates against the different uh, viral families. Uh, we do this you know, internally with our, our own team, but also through academic and industrial contracting partners who are the best of the best in their specific area to be able to make rapid progress. So, you know, I'm personally very much looking forward uh, to this next phase of working with you, David, and the rest of the GV team. Uh, we are extremely happy to have you as our lead investor and partner in this. And we actually, I have to say, we already greatly benefited from being able to tap into the vast capabilities of the GV family. So thank you very much for that. Yeah, no, it's, uh, I can't tell you how thrilled we are at GV and in particular at the life science team to have Leiden Labs as part of a uh, part of the portfolio because we like you are so focused on making an impact and when we think about the impact that we think Leiden Labs can make around the world it's uh it's just so exciting and and we're just thrilled to be part of this journey i'm looking forward to the time when we'll all be able to meet in person either here in the U.S. or over in the Netherlands um, and uh, beginning to see the light at the end of the tunnel that we may be able to travel once we're all vaccinated and healthy. But uh, Kunrad, I just want to thank you again for taking some time to chat with us today. Thank you for your passion and your vision uh, with everybody at Leiden Labs to make the kind of impact that we need and uh, thrilled to have you as part of the GV family.